Queen Elizabeth II was laid to rest this week at the age of 96, after reigning for 70 years. As many people around the world continue to honor her life and legacy, I wanted to share the story of how her coronation led to one of the most popular toys in the world. This is the Matchbox edition of Where's the Fun From? Die-cast cars have been around as long as cars have. Chicago's doused manufacturing made what many historians consider to be the first mass-produced die-cast car. With its Model T Ford, first made in 1914, just five years after Ford's actual Model T was produced. Another legendary name in die-cast emerged across the Atlantic in 1933, when Dinky Toys in England started making die-cast cars for Meccano train sets. The path driven by Matchbox was blazed by Doust, Dinky, and other early die-casters. Die-casting is the process of pouring a molten metal like zinc into a heated mold and allowing it to solidify. When the cast is cooled, it's removed from the mold and voila, die-cast part. The process takes only a few seconds and allows for the production of highly detailed items inexpensively and in mass quantities. No other die-cast brand of toys would take fun to the masses like Matchbox. After their World War II service in the Royal English Navy, friends Leslie Smith and Rodney Smith joined forces in 1947 and their first names to form a company called Lesney Products. Less than a year after launching their company, the Smiths added a talented die-caster and mold maker named Jack O'Dell. In 1950, the Korean War began, when the British government restricted the use of zinc, which was the primary metal used in die-casting inexpensive toys, the legislation nearly crippled the upstart toy company. Rodney Smith became so discouraged that he left the company. Leslie Smith and Jack O'Dell weathered the storm, which eventually lifted in 1952, along with the ban on zinc. Then, on February 6th, King George died. As all of Britain prepared for the throne to pass to his daughter, Elizabeth II, inspiration struck. Smith and Odell decided to make a replica of the Gold State Coach, the royal eight-horse-drawn carriage used by the royal family. On June 2, 1953, when the official ascension of the new queen was televised around the world, the centerpiece of the three-hour ceremony was the regal coronation coach. Three million people lined the streets of London to watch the Queen travel from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Abbey in the 29-foot-long, four-ton gilded carriage, which was first commissioned in 1760 by King George III. Lesney's version of the coronation coach was a hit, selling 33,000 units. The toy replica wasn't four tons, but it was big, almost 16 inches long, and expensive. So Smith and Odell decided to make and sell a more affordable version of it in miniature, just four and a half inches long. The compact coach was so cute, it proved irresistible, selling over a million units. Legend has it that around this time, Odell's daughter Annie had a show-and-tell event at school, and the caveat was that the toys and trinkets that the kids could bring in had to fit inside a matchbox. When the tiny coronation coach was still too big, Odell made a miniature miniature. A tinier version of the company's road roller toy, but crafted out of brass. Another version of the story is that little Annie Odell would bring bugs into school inside of matchboxes, and when the teacher complained, Jack Odell said to his daughter, if I make you a miniature toy, will you stop bringing bugs into school, please? Either story may be true or maybe not but there's no doubt that the tiny coronation coach and its unheralded success launched a million matchboxes. The first four matchbox vehicles were a road roller, dumper truck, cement mixer, and tractor. The toys were die cast at an irresistibly small size, yet held an impressive amount of detail. The matchbox series turned into a gold mine for Lesney. 1958 to 1968 proved to be the pinnacle of Matchbox's success. Lesney went public in 1960, and in 1964 set their sights on America. A hundred million Matchbox vehicles were sold in 1966, and just three years later, that number had grown to 286 million. Seemingly nothing could slow down Matchbox. That is, until this happened. They're the fastest metal cars you've ever seen. 
Mattel's new Hot Wheels. By creating a die-cast car with thin wire axles that allowed the wheels to turn with far less friction, Hot Wheels were the fastest cars on the market when they were released in 1968. Fueled by a high-octane $10 million advertising campaign, Mattel promoted Hot Wheels full throttle. While the Matchbox series contained mostly work vehicles, Hot Wheels gave kids race cars. Matchbox sales plummeted from $28 million to $6 million. Reacting quickly and efficiently, Lesney retooled in the latter part of 1969 and got back in the race with their own version of a low-friction car called Superfast. The scorching new line featured hot rods and dragsters, bolder paint schemes, and flat-out cooler cars made Superfast an immediate hit. The Matchbox 1-75 to series meant that from year to year, Lesney's basic line always contained 75 vehicles. They retired old models and introduced new ones constantly, a key component to the success of the line. Today, Matchbox ironically shares a garage with Hot Wheels under Mattel's ownership, where they position Hot Wheels for a slightly older audience while keeping Matchbox vehicles true to their classic origins, complete with the dual themes of work and rescue. Collectors may keep them untouched within their sealed plastic shells, but the future of Matchbox vehicles rests in the palm of a million little hands. 69 years after their introduction, the fun of Matchbox endures. Godspeed to the Queen, and that's the tale of her coronation coach and the tiny toy cars she helped make famous. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And tell a friend. Until next time, seize the play.